Thank you, Union Music. Hand chimes and Mount Olive ringers. Thank you. Part of the words of the tune that they just played, we will sing in a few minutes as our gathering song, Hymn 292, Love Has Come. And those words will include, Love is Jesus within and among us. Love is Jesus within and among us. We give thanks for Jesus' love within us and among us this day. Uh, the Sunday school children and youth and some adults went out doing some Christmas shopping this morning over at Food Lion, uh, purchasing food and other items to give away. And they're wearing their thrivent Live Generously t-shirts this day. So special thanks to them sharing Christ's love with others in our community through their efforts this morning in Sunday school. It was a field trip, right guys? Good, good field trip. Um, this morning when I got here, I uh, discovered that there had been a, a break-in to Mount Olive. Uh, and break-in may be too strong a word. We didn't find any doors, exterior doors with a problem, but somehow someone got inside and did a little bit of damage with our sacristy door that we'll need to get repaired and an office door with plexiglass. A lot of drawers were pulled out. It looked like the person was looking for cash. Uh, we don't, haven't found anything else missing, but if you know of various things around Mount Olive, if all of a sudden you don't see them, and there might be a, a reason for that. But uh, we give thanks that nothing evident, at least, has disappeared, and that may, the person may have just been looking for some cash. Uh, the, an officer was here this morning, and uh, for about 45 minutes as we walked through and took a look and took pictures and that type of thing. Uh, but I also say that with regards to not only our concerns for the church property, but also uh, my personal concerns. When I get here on Sunday mornings, I usually like to spend some nice time in prayer. But when you walk in and you see a plexiglass window pane knocked out of the office door, uh, it's hard to get settled down to pray. And then to walk around the building with a police officer is kind of hard to get settled down to pray. So uh, uh, I'm a little bit disheveled this morning still. Our thoughts and prayers uh, go with, uh, are with Phil Barton and with Beth Huber and all their family today and in the days ahead. Uh, yesterday, Phil and Beth's mother, Florence Barton, died. Uh, tomorrow, we will gather for a receiving at 2 o'clock in Heritage Hall downstairs. 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock receiving in Heritage Hall and 3 o'clock the funeral service for Florence Barton, our Lord's servant, will be held. Uh, our thoughts and prayers are with you, Phil and, and Beth. Are there other announcements or prayer concerns to mention at this time? Uh, one last thing, the, the bulletin, make sure you have on the, the white bulletin, make sure it says 1045 a.m. worship service at the bottom of that. Uh, at the early worship service, we discovered that there were 8.30 and 10.45 bulletins all put together in stacks out there, and they were different. And so some people needed to switch them out to change them out. So if you need to change, uh, raise a hand, and Harry, our usher back here, Harry will come give you a 10.45 bulletin if, if you need that. Otherwise, I invite you to stand as you are able as we gather for worship with the love of Jesus within and among us. In the name of God, the creator of light, Jesus, the light of the world, and the Holy Spirit, the light who illumines our path. Amen. Amen. In this season of light, let us go before God and confess our words and actions, how our words and actions contribute to the darkness instead of adding to the light. God of love and light, we confess that we are not always the light bearers you desire us to be. We shine a spotlight on the transgressions of others while trying to keep our own sins hidden in the dark. We burn bridges by being impatient, opinionated, and judgmental. We inflame others by lashing out in anger. We go through our days enveloped in the gloom of fear and doubt. We let our witness become a smoldering ember until it dies out completely. Forgive us, Jesus, the everlasting light. Come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Teach us to walk as children of light, 
surrounded by your love, forgiveness, and healing. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. God is light, and in God there is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that binds us, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. 
For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Great job. Everyone, come on up and have a seat. And if there are any other children who would like to join us for the children's message, come on up. You all did a great job. Thank you for singing this morning. You were singing about our Advent wreath, about today being the fourth Sunday in Advent. So we have four candles lit now. And only one left, the one in the middle. Do you know when we light that one in the middle? On Christmas Eve, yes, to say that Jesus has come. And that's what you all were singing about. You also used some words today in your song that talked about feelings. I want to see you all make some faces for me about certain feelings you might have. When you feel sad, what kind of face do you make? Not that kind of face? Yeah? What's a sad face look like? There you go. All right. How about a mad face? Ooh, that's, that frightens me. I hope you all never get mad at me. Oh, my goodness. How about happy? Yeah, happy faces? What about joy? That was one of the words you sang. It's even on my shirt today. What does joy look like? It's the same thing as happy, but maybe even happier than happy. To be joyful. Well, there's not an O, but the snowflake is supposed to be an O. That's how you make joy out of it. Yeah, that's right. Well, to be joyful is to be really happy, to be really glad. And today, in our scripture verse, we're going to hear about when Jesus' mom, Mary... When she was first pregnant with Jesus, she went to visit her cousin. Do you all have cousins? Yeah? You have cousins? Your cousins are coming in two days? Awesome. How do you feel when your cousins come to visit or when you get to go see them? Happy. Happy. Yeah, joyful. Well, when she went to see her cousin, her cousin's name was Elizabeth, the baby that Elizabeth was pregnant with actually jumped in her belly. 
because the baby was so happy. Happy to hear Mary's voice because that baby somehow knew that Jesus was coming. So sometimes, like when you see your cousins, do you ever jump for joy? You do? You jump? Yeah, because it's so exciting. You hide. <laughs> they have to come and find you? You're already playing games with them. Oh, you come back out? And then what do you do? Do you jump with joy? No, you know. <laughs> well, I want everyone to stand up with me. Come stand up. Come stand down here. Because we're going to practice jumping for joy. Because I have a feeling in the next few days there might be a couple opportunities in which you all are going to jump for joy. Careful there. All right. We'll just jump real small there, okay? All right. So everybody, we're going to jump. Ready? One, two, three, jump! That was pretty good. That's right. Jump for joy. Let's do it again. we got to practice, you know. It's a good time to practice joy. One, two, three, jump! All right. Now, I'm going to sing you a song. And if any of you know it, you sing it with me. But every time I say joy, you're going to jump. Okay? I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Very good. So this week... When you find moments that are joyful, go ahead and give them a jump. Just like that baby in Elizabeth's belly jumped when he heard Mary's voice. You all have a great week, and I hope I see you on Christmas Eve. first reading comes from the fifth chapter of Micah, beginning with the second verse. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Here ends the lesson.
second reading comes to us in the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter, beginning at the fifth verse. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, see, God, I've come to do your will, O God. When you said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. Then he added, see, I've come to do your will. He abolishes, abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, after the angel Gabriel had told Mary that she would have a child who would be the son of the Most High, who would be the Savior of the world, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. First, another comment about the children's sermon. And what did the kids do? They jump for joy, about leaping for joy, jumping for joy. Leaping for joy is the first response to the miracle of Christmas, the first response that the inside the womb John the Baptist gives in response to knowing that his Savior Jesus is near, is leaping for joy. So even though not all of us can leap anymore or jump like we used to, we can still leap, at least in our hearts, at least like John the Baptist did, because no one saw him jump. His mother felt him jump, but we didn't see him jump, so I'll just pretend that I see each one of you all jumping for joy as well, leaping for joy. Again, to uh, Phil and to Beth, our Christian sympathies are extended to you, and tomorrow we will uh, share the story of Florence Barton and her Savior, Jesus Christ, but I will say that when Florence's husband died, 2004, Glenn Barton told jokes. He made people laugh around him quite often. 
And at the conclusion, near the conclusion of that sermon that day, I used another Bible text from the Gospel of Luke, the sixth chapter of Luke, where Jesus has the Beatitudes, the blessings. And in the particular blessing that I read then, near the end of that sermon, I said, Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh, such as Glenn laughed. And those around Glenn laughed. But I continued, Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, and when they revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. Surely your reward is great in heaven. And I encourage people to leap for joy even in the midst of that funeral and to laugh because one day we would all join in the joyful reunion in heaven. So the other place in the Bible, at least in the Gospel of Luke, that leap for joy is used besides in this Annunciation story, in this Christmas story, is in the Beatitudes of Jesus. Leap for joy. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. The bulletin cover reminds us. Another Beatitude. Blessed are you among women. And Phil and Beth and others might join in saying that means our mother Florence. Blessed are you among women for sure, Florence, and for all of our mothers and for each one of you. Blessed are you. And each one of you, male and female, are indeed blessed by God. And let me then get to the sermon about why. First of all, the question is, who was Jesus' mother? 